Brigham and Women's Hospital will test the safety and effectiveness of a nasal vaccine aimed at preventing and slowing Alzheimer's. The small trial includes just 16 participants between the ages of 60 and 85 who show early signs of Alzheimer's. Each participant will receive two doses of the vaccine one week apart. Researchers say they want to determine the safety of the vaccine, but also how it impacts a patient's white blood cell count. Today, the House will vote to censure Representative Paul Gosar for a disturbing tweet. The Arizona lawmaker posted a video that showed him hitting fellow lawmaker Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with a sword. Democratic lawmakers said the video should be considered a threat to another House member's life. Gosar denied intending any violence, but rather a symbolic portrayal over the fight over immigration policy. The censure vote also calls for Gosar to be removed from two committees. A censure carries no legal fallout, but is more of a black mark on a lawmaker's career. The ball will once again drop over Times Square this New Year's Eve. After last year's gathering was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the party is back on, according to New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. He announced yesterday that Times Square will be open for hundreds of thousands of partygoers to gather and ring in the new year. However, there will be precautions in place this season. Everyone who comes down for the celebration must be vaccinated and they must provide a vaccination card and photo ID to join the party. 454 now since the COVID vaccine was approved for younger children, many healthcare organizations have come up with ways to keep kids comfortable while getting the shots. Yes, we'll tell you how one small town pharmacist has stepped up to take the sting out of getting vaccinated when sunrise returns. 456, when COVID vaccines became available to kids five and up, one small pharmacy set out to find fun ways to help kids get vaccinated. Rahima Ellis reports from Springfield, Pennsylvania. A Pennsylvania school gym turned into a carnival may be the best place for kids to get vaccinated with balloons, candy, and superheroes. You did it! taking the sting out of the shot. And was it painful? No. The woman in the costume, pharmacist Chichi Moma, came up with the idea, getting more than 18,000 kids vaccinated. Where does the help come from? Oh, the community. I have an army of volunteers. And she had experience to make it work. I give good shots. When Chichi's small pharmacy was inundated with calls from adults wanting the vaccine well. in a county with no public health department, she got busy and went from having only 100 doses to giving out more than 30,000 vaccines. I call the Department of Health every single day. What made you think that you could do this? Well, I don't take no for an answer. And she did the same thing to get shots for kids, but traded in her white pharmacy coat for a cartoon costume. And if taking off the white coat makes the child more comfortable, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Parents lined up with their kids. It's, it's remarkable. One woman on a mission. Doing what I love to do, which is helping people. Helping them stay well. Rahima Ellis, NBC News, Springfield, Pennsylvania. LEX18, streaming local news 24-7. Search for LEX18 on your device. Count on LEX 18 News. Senator McConnell blasts the president's economic agenda, saying it's what's driving up record inflation we're seeing. We're going to take a look at some other potential causes. Plus, Papa John's is being rebranded. Hear what some consumer experts say is the cause and see what the company has to say. Similar pattern for UK basketball. Feeling things about early before pulling away with a huge lead. This is LEX 18 News at Sunrise. Keeps going right now on a Wednesday morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. It is the middle of the work week, November 17th. I'm Claire Crouch. I'm Chris Goodman and meteorologist Tom Ackerman here. Do we have a tiny little bit of rain overnight? I noticed it was a little wet outside. Um, not that I'm aware no? of. Okay. No. Just looked a little wet outside. Maybe your now. neighbor's sprinkler was running. Could could have been. Could yeah. have been. Um, Savannah running <laughs> loose, just <laughs> making Savannah the whole world really her toilet. Use the bathroom. <laughs> really, really yeah. anyway. uh, we definitely have some rain coming tomorrow morning, overnight and into tomorrow morning. And uh, really, the big story for today is the warm up. We've been talking about it all week. And uh, here is a look outside at the moment. Nothing doing via our 21C Museum camera. 
live camera and the max track showing a clean sweep out there. So as far as today is concerned, there are two stories. Really, it's going to be the warm up. We should see highs way above average around 70 degrees. Uh, time of the year, we're nowhere near that. Uh, usually much, much cooler down the 50s. But also, we're going to have a really gusty southwesterly wind. So if you're going to be out trying to rake leaves like I will be today, you're going to be fighting a 25, 35 mile per hour wind gust at times. And here are the showers that are lining up that will eventually get to us overnight and into tomorrow morning. We are in the upper 50s to low 60s. It is mild out there. Gusty and warmer midweek. Those showers Thursday and then a big chill to start the weekend off. Temperatures tanking after that front goes through tomorrow morning. We'll talk about how chilly it stays over the weekend and cover much more coming up in your eight day forecast. All right, Tom, thank you. It is 502. All adults may soon become eligible for the Pfizer COVID booster vaccine. Officials say the FDA could authorize Pfizer BioNTech's COVID-19 booster shot for all adults within days. In news first reported by the New York Times, the FDA's action could come by tomorrow, maybe Friday. That is when the CDC's vaccine advisory committee is scheduled to meet to discuss boosters. Pfizer requested emergency use authorization for the COVID booster last week, stating the results of their phase three clinical trial showed the third dose to be safe and effective. Currently, Pfizer's booster shot is authorized for those over the age of 65, those living in long term care facilities and for people ages 18 to 64 who have underlying health conditions or who are at higher risk because of their jobs. If approved, all adults would be able to get the Pfizer COVID booster six months after their second injection. Here at home, some animal shelters in Kentucky are seeing high numbers of intakes in 2021 compared to previous years. According to shelter workers, many spay and neuter clinics were shut down during a portion of 2020. And because of this, shelters are seeing an overload of new litters of puppies and kittens. Some shelters desperately need homes for foster animals and ask anyone who could keep a litter of kittens or puppies to contact their local shelter and offer assistance if possible. Senator Mitch McConnell says that inflation is without a doubt the number one issue in the country right now. Speaking in Washington, D.C. yesterday, the Senate Minority Leader cited a statistic saying that more than 90% of Americans are either extremely or somewhat concerned about inflation. Several explanations have been offered for increasing inflation, including pent up demand, overwhelmed supply chains and federal government stimulus spending, all of which are connected to the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, Senator McConnell continues to criticize the economic policies of the Biden administration. We already know that uh, some of the most reputable economists in the country have said that the bill that passed back in March is the principal reason for the raging inflation that we have. And now we have reputable economists who actually support BBB, liberal leaning economists, who say that if BBB passes, it will only exacerbate, only make worse inflation, not only this year, but next year. The consumer price index surged 6.2% from a year ago in October, the most since December 1990, according to CNBC. President Joe Biden traveled to New Hampshire yesterday to sell his new infrastructure law. The backdrop of his speech was a structurally deficient bridge. Caitlin Collins has more. President Biden taking his sales pitch to New Hampshire. We now rank 13th in the world in terms of infrastructure. Well, we're about to turn things around in a big way. Biden visiting a dilapidated bridge that will benefit from the trillion dollar infrastructure bill he signed into law on Monday. When you see these projects starting in your hometowns, I want you to feel what I feel, pride. Pride of what we can do together as the United States of America. Yeah. The win comes at a critical time for Biden, who is facing the lowest poll numbers of his presidency. People were rightly frustrated that it took longer than it should have to get this bill passed. In Washington, House Democrats are hoping to advance the second part of Biden's economic agenda this week. There's more to come. And so happy that hopefully this week we will be passing the Build Back Better. But major divisions remain between moderates and progressives over how to put the social spending plan, which ranges from child care to climate change, into law. You have to have faith in the other side that they're they're negotiating, 
in good faith. I think we have some money in the bank now from the infrastructure bill and we got to take it to other issues. Fearful of making inflation worse with more federal spending, Senator Joe Manchin has pushed to delay the bill, telling CNN he has, quote, a lot of concerns about voting on it before Christmas. I hear it when I go to the grocery store or if I go to the gas station, they say, are you as mad as I am? And I says, absolutely. Party leaders are pushing back and blaming Republicans. Want to fight inflation? Support Build Back Better. Republicans, on the other hand, think inflation is, quote, a gold mine, unquote, for them and are rooting for prices to go up. And that was Caitlin Collins reporting. It's 507 now. Papa John's is getting a makeover. Some advertising for the new brand of the pizza chain founded in Metro Louisville is dropping the word pizza. The logo also no longer has an apostrophe after John. Business experts say that could be perceived as a way to put more space between the restaurant chain and its founder and former CEO, John Schnatter. Company execs say the new font is actually inspired by Papa John's stretchy pizza dough. The colors reflect key ingredients like red for tomato and green for basil. You'll also see the new logo inside the stores, along with changes to make it easier for self-service checkout at pickup counters. UK basketball post another dominant victory, running away with an 80-55 victory against Mount St. Mary's in Rupp Arena, leading 38-27 at halftime. Kentucky broke the game wide open with a 23-5 run over just under seven minutes left for a 61-32 cushion that grew to 31 with seven minutes, 24 seconds remaining. The Mountaineers went back and forth with Kentucky early on, but they quickly fell behind into the second half. It was a similar pattern to the one the Wildcats followed against Robert Morris, sorting things out early before erupting into a display of dominance. The Cats next host Ohio University. That is on Friday night at 7 on the SEC Network. Our sports team will have much more on last night's game coming up during our 5.30 half hour. And another big headline from last night's game for the second straight game. A UK fan has made the iconic half-court shot to win $10,000 courtesy of Central Bank. Take a look. Dylan King sinks his half-court attempt and then celebrates to the roar of approving fans. The shot is igniting quite a bit of praise on social media as well. All right, and Kentucky's basketball team might be putting in work, but there's some disappointing news for the Big Blue Crush blood battle. Yeah, the Kentucky Blood Center says we are falling way behind Tennessee, and low donor turnout could impact the hospital blood supply ahead of the holidays. Evelyn Schultz joins us from our studio this morning with this LEX 18 update. Yeah, good morning, Chris and Claire. This is not the turnout Kentucky Blood Center wants to see for Big Blue Crush. Kentucky has won the competition the past two years, but this year, KBC says, we are trailing way behind the Vols. Yesterday, Kentucky saw 335 donors give blood, while 453 Tennessee fans rolled up their sleeves yesterday. That leaves Kentucky trailing 707 to 933 donors in total. Yesterday actually marked the fewest donors KBC has seen in the competition on a single day in more than a decade. Officials at KBC are urging Kentucky fans to do their part by rolling up their sleeves this week. The blood supply remains at near critical levels and they say donating could help save lives. You can help Kentucky come back by visiting any KBC donor center this week. They're open from 9 to 6 for Big Blue Crush or you can always donate at a mobile blood drive through Friday. All right, and Evelyn, why does the Kentucky Blood Center say donating blood is so important? Claire, this is an impressive number I saw this morning. KBC says more than 200,000 lives are saved in the Commonwealth each year, all because of blood donation. Officials tell LEX 18 they transfuse an average of 270 pints each day at local hospitals. And to keep up with that demand, they need at least 400 donors a day to give blood. They say they see an average of 61,000 donors each each year. All right, let's hope uh, Kentucky fans can step it up and take the lead. Evelyn Schultz in our studio this morning. Thank you. Clicking over to 511 right now, a Kentucky family has been reunited with a precious family heirloom after more than a month apart. Charlie the Bear made his way back to his owner yesterday. Mavis DeMutty was overjoyed to see the stuffed animal. 
The 40 year old toy was found at the Warren County Public Library by an employee who then posted him on social media to alert the family of his whereabouts. Mavis had received the stuffed animal from her father, whose mother bought the bear when she was a teenager and handed it down to him when he was a child. I picked him up and when I looked at him, I thought, oh, he's a well-loved bear. And I just, I gave him a hug and I thought somebody's gonna be missing him. So the next day, came in, asked Rachel. I said, could you take a picture of him and put him on social media and maybe we can find the family. Mavis's mom says it's a good thing that now the bear story is being shared with the world. How sweet. Mm. So glad they made sure that little girl got her bear back. All right, 512 here on Sunrise. We're feeling pretty comfortable today. Just be on the lookout for some wind. Yeah, you'll want to get that yard work finished today. If you have any on your to-do list, Tom's up after the break to explain why. Looking good out there early this morning, and we have got a warm day on the way. This is downtown from our St. Joseph Hospital live camera. Max track will light up tomorrow morning, but at the moment, there isn't anything anywhere near us. So we are dry today. We're going to be windy, gusty at times, and really, really warm for this time of the year. Here's what's going to change that up. Cold front dropping in, so not only will we see a chill later in the week, we're also going to see a rising rain chance, just not today. Today we've got that strong south to southwesterly wind, gusty, anywhere between 25 to 35 mile per hour gust, and then rain likely tomorrow morning. That rain will track east and then eventually out of here. And notice how those clouds are clearing out into late Thursday and early Friday morning. That'll set us up for clear skies and a very cold night with lows down in the 20s as high pressure ridges in from out west and a chilly start to the weekend. Friday's highs probably only going to be in the 40s. Rainfall anywhere from about a quarter to a, a half an inch of rain as that wave blows through the tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. Could be some isolated spots a little bit higher. And look at the temperatures at the moment. We're already in the upper 50s, around 60. We're shooting for about a 70 degree high today, so well above average warmth. But here comes that cold front, and here comes the below normal stuff that we've become accustomed to. And watch what happens. We just keep getting recurring shots of it. That's the weekend. This is an early next week. Another wave toward the middle of next week. And then another potential wave following it up for the weekend. So we're not going to catch much of a break. And as far as that cold is concerned, the low temperature trend early Friday morning, we're going to be down in the mid 20s. So if you are out early for the November full moon, Friday, November 19th, it's officially full at 3:57 in the morning. It's going to be a cold one. Uh, a lot of beaver trapping traditionally at this time of the year. So this month's nickname is the uh, the beaver moon, but also a point of interest. Uh, there's going to be a partial lunar eclipse, and this is uh, the longest one that we've had in almost 580 years. In totality, it's going to be about three and a half hours long. And at its maximum, it's going to be about 97% eclipse. So not a full lunar eclipse, but almost there. And you notice the time, if you want to get out and watch it, uh, you know, it's going to be a full moon and we're going to have that 402 maximum eclipse there. So it's early in the morning, which means you're going to be cold if you're out there checking it out. So from about two in the morning uh, till just before six is the rough time frame for that. 70 for the high today, gusty and warm, partly to mostly sunny. It is going to be a beautiful, just unusually warm day out there, a balmy day for November. Showers likely overnight. That rain kicks in. It will diminish Thursday afternoon and then Friday. We start the weekend off with sunshine, but it is chilly. Highs in the 40s will edge our way back into the low 50s and then have another round coming in. Monday could be pretty miserable. Temperatures in the 40s, rain chances out there with lows in the mid 30s could be a hint of a wintry mix early Monday morning. We'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Welcome back here at 519 on Sunrise. It's time for Consumer Watch. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen now says the U.S. government could reach its debt limit by the middle of next month. Yellen estimates the government will run out of money on December 15th, an extension from the previous deadline of December 3rd. She sent a letter outlining her thoughts on the matter to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Tuesday. Yellen wrote in part that the Treasury Department might not have enough resources to continue financing government operations past the middle of December. Baby formula might be harder to find in stores. Walgreens reports the demand for infant formula is increasing nationwide at the same time its suppliers are struggling to restock shelves. 
The Infant Nutrition Council of America says its members are working with distributors, retailers and state agencies on innovative ways to ensure availability of infant formula. KFC wants its customers to ditch the drive through. The Kentucky based chicken chain is providing an alternative that it believes may be more efficient. It's called quick pickup and it works like this. You order ahead on the KFC app or website, drive to the location and park at a dedicated spot. Then you just stroll in, snag your food off a shelf by the register. The chain is offering free large fries with a $5 purchase if they are picked up at a quick pickup. The second trailer for the newest Spider-Man film has been released. The Spider-Man No Way Home trailer confirms appearances from villains from past movies, including Electro, the Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus. Tom Holland returns as Spider-Man. There is speculation that previous Spider-Men, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, will appear in this movie as well, but there was no sight of them in the trailers. Spider-Man No Way Home releases in theaters only on December the 17th. Spider-Men. Spider-Men. I like that. All right, it's 521 here on Sunrise. From a superhero with spider abilities to an actual Super-sized spider. Yeah, it feels weird to say this to viewers, but if you have arachnophobia <laughs> or the fear of spiders, you might want to step away from your TV for just a bit. We are getting a look at a mega spider out of Australia when we check out what's trending next. Hey, we're back. 524 time to cover some trending stories on this Wednesday morning. A bear that spent almost a month with a plastic jar on its head oh. has been freed. Oh, blessed little heart. The 250 pound female bear was spotted wandering around Collier County, Florida twice. Initial efforts to trap the bear weren't successful and it wasn't seen again for three weeks when someone spotted the animal on a security camera. Oh. No, this is sad. <laughs> Officials then set new traps and included night patrols in order to trap the bear and remove the container, which authorities believe was part of an automatic pet feeder. So seems like she uh, <laughs> found a nice little treat, but didn't uh, expect uh. that it was going to be so difficult to get out of. Staff members were able to clean a neck injury caused by the container and the bear was released. There she goes back into the wild. Didn't even realize just how grateful she would be. For That's that. right. And now she's free again. Yeah. Cool. The massive spider with fangs you are about to see is the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, fair warning. If spiders creep you out, you might want to look away briefly. It's called a funnel web spider nicknamed mega spider. Mm. A reptile park Ooh. in Australia says this one is the biggest of its kind. It's hairy. It's dark in color <laughs> and measures eight centimeters from foot to foot. But the real threat from this guy is it's nearly inch long fangs, oh, no. which are sharp enough and strong enough to pierce a human fingernail. <laughs> Well, you're really selling it. Good. I know. <laughs> it was donated anonymously to an anti-venom program in Australia. The Let Australian go. Reptile Park says mega spiders' fangs will be milked for venom that can be turned into anti-venom. They're they're putting a call out. They're wanting more people to donate some of these mega spiders because they think that they're going to be able to, you know, make some anti-venom that's going to save a lot of Imagine being the person that has to milk the spider. I know. I know like, exactly you? how does that work? Like, no, I don't <laughs> think I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. What, is, what do you do for a living? A I'm, very I'm delicate a spider, spider milker. milker. I milk spiders. <laughs> A uh, Thanksgiving tradition is still going strong for two former strangers who met in 2016 after an accidental dinner invitation. Uh, this is just the story that never gets old. Wanda Dench thought she was sending a text with a dinner invite to her grandson. Turns out he had changed his number. Jamal Hinton got the message instead. The two figured out the mistake, then sent selfies to each other, and that's when Hinton asked if he could still come over to her home in Mesa, Arizona. <laughs> and Dent replied saying, of course you can. That's what grandmas do, feed everyone. And that started the holiday tradition, which is now in its sixth year. Hinton has documented the holiday each year on social media, and they've just got this bond now. And I think I remember last year, I believe her husband passed away I from COVID. Think, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I yeah. remember something about that. Yes. And so it's special that they can continue oh. this, you know, because I'm sure this holiday might be an extra 
tough. Tough. Yeah. For her. So I'm yeah, glad they're absolutely. still doing it and making it happen. 527 now here at Sunrise continues today, the perfect day to tell someone to take a hike. Yeah. Because it's National Take a Hike Day. Oh, well, that's less fun. How you can <laughs> celebrate coming up. Tom? Well, we have ideal weather for You can take a hike and tell somebody to take a hike at the same yeah. time. Uh, the only drawback could be gusty wind. We'll talk about where we're headed coming up. Count on LEX 18 News. Approval for all adults for the Pfizer COVID booster could come within days. What the governor says this could mean for Kentuckians. Plus, we continue our spotlight on Danville as we dive into the history of the town known as the birthplace of Kentucky. And New Year's Eve partiers will be allowed back in Times Square this year, but we'll tell you what they need to have to watch the ball drop. LEX 18 News at Sunrise continues right now at 530. Well, they need party favors. That's they right. Need those, what do you call those blowy things? Noisemakers? Noisemakers. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the very sophisticated name of noisemaker. I, I kind of prefer blowy things. Yeah. I know, blowy thing works. <laughs> Whatever happens, right? Uh, it's Wednesday, November 17th. Tom is here to tell us how we, we have a nice Wednesday ahead, really. Yeah, yeah, and you said it's take a hike day. I mean, you could totally do that. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing you want to watch out for is the wind is going to be awfully gusty. So, you know, possibly strong enough to bring uh, some weaker tree limbs down. We're talking gusts upwards of about 35 miles per hour, but it's also going to be out of the southwest, which means we're going to be warming things up. This is what it looks like downtown. Uh, our Lexington Financial Center, a little bit of cloud cover out there this morning, but by later on today, we'll end up mostly sunny. And the good news is the max track is clear. So along with that wind and that afternoon sunshine, no precipitation to worry about. The LAX 18 storm tracker future track as we uh, spin you out into the afternoon. We're looking good. Now, clouds will get thicker out to the west. They'll initially hold to the west by the evening commute. You'll start to see that cloud deck moving in. And eventually those showers that are with it will overspread the Commonwealth overnight. So we're more likely to see rain for the morning commute tomorrow as opposed to uh, the evening commute today. We're in the upper 50s to low 60s. It is pretty warm out there. And over the next three days, we're heading in the wrong direction. That's a 70 degree high today. And that is a 43 degree high Friday. We'll talk about the transition, talk about where we're headed into the upcoming weekend as well. 532 and we begin with an update on Pfizer's COVID vaccine booster as the FDA could authorize the shot for all adults within days. That's right. A decision could come tomorrow or Friday. Evelyn Schultz is in our studio this morning. She joins us with this COVID-19 in Kentucky coverage. Good morning, Chris and Claire. The FDA's approval could come as Governor Andy Bashir announced on Monday. He's also considering the possibility of issuing an executive order that would expand eligibility for the booster shot. The governor said COVID-19 cases in Kentucky seem to be hitting a plateau. They declined for seven weeks in a row, but Kentucky has now reported more than 3,000 new cases in the past few days. And when it comes to the booster, only certain groups are currently eligible. People 60 and older, those who have underlying health conditions, and people who live or work in high-risk settings. On Monday, the governor pointed to a handful of states that have already brought into access to booster shots. Everybody should be able to get a booster six months after their second shot as quickly as we can. I believe that that's the way that we fight off the next wave, and I believe the federal government will come back around to it and to that decision at some point. Now that could happen in the next couple of days. If the FDA approves the booster, all adults would be able to get the Pfizer COVID booster six months after their second injection. And Evelyn, what about younger kids in Kentucky? I mean, they become eligible for the uh, Pfizer vaccine just a few weeks ago. Yeah, Chris, I checked the state's vaccine dashboard this morning. Nearly 18,000 children between ages 5 and 11 have gotten their first dose in the past two weeks. That's about 5% of that age group. On Monday, the governor reiterated the Pfizer vaccine safety for children. The state is even rolling out advertisements to encourage parents to sign their kids up for the shot. All right, Evelyn Schultz in the studio this morning. Evelyn, thank you. It is 534 now. High drama in Kenosha, Wisconsin, as the Kyle Rittenhouse trial is now in the hands of the jury. The jury of 12 deliberated for a full day yesterday without reaching a decision. Gabe Gutierrez reports now from the courthouse. Anthony and Jojo. Tensions high as Kenosha waits. Hundreds of National Guard troops on standby, but not yet deployed. People who come here for reasons that 
do not bring to this good to this community, we don't want you here. All right, folks, you can retire to consider your verdicts. The jury now deliberating for more than eight hours in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. The Rittenhouse himself picked at random six jury alternates from a lottery drum. They'll remain in the courthouse in a separate room while the other 12 jurors deliberate. Seven women and five men, including one person of color. If the jury finds that Rittenhouse provoked the initial attack, then Rittenhouse may lose the argument of self-defense completely. Rittenhouse is charged with five felony counts, the most serious first-degree intentional homicide. The prosecution portraying him as a then 17-year-old vigilante. You cannot claim self-defense against a danger you create. And the defense insisting there was a rush to judgment. Every person who was shot was attacking Kyle. Kyle shot Joseph Rosenbaum to stop a threat to his person. And I'm glad he shot him. You don't even understand the law. What the heated the case became a rallying cry for conservatives and gun rights supporters, many of whom raised money for Rittenhouse's defense and $2 million bail. Do you view this as an attack on the Second Amendment? Yes. Emily Cahill thinks he's innocent. People say he was a vigilante, but he was one of us going out and protecting the community. But for the girlfriend of Anthony Huber, the second man Rittenhouse shot and killed, the trial is about accountability. I think that Real justice, honestly, would be at least, I mean, at the bare minimum, just some consequence for his actions. Gabe Gutierrez reporting from Wisconsin. 536 now. Meanwhile, the defense for three men charged with the murder of Ahmad Arbery will start presenting their case today. Prosecutors wrapped up their case yesterday after showing jurors pictures from Arbery's autopsy and hearing testimony from the pathologist who performed it. The three men are charged with chasing down and shooting Arbery. They pleaded not guilty to murder, aggravated assault, and false imprisonment. Their attorneys will argue the men tried to make a citizen's arrest after suspecting that Arbery was a burglar. The ball will once again drop over Times Square this New Year's Eve. After last year's gathering was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the party is back on, according to New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. He announced yesterday that Times Square will be open for hundreds of thousands of partygoers to gather and ring in the new year. However, there will be precautions in place this season. Everyone who comes down for the celebration must be vaccinated and they must provide a vaccination card and photo ID to join the party. 537, although the UK basketball team has put in another powerful performance, UK fans continue to lag behind for the second day of the Big Blue Crush blood battle. The Kentucky Blood Center has fallen even further behind in its competition with Medic Regional Blood Center and Tennessee fans. Kentucky saw 335 donors giving blood, while 453 Tennessee fans rolled up their sleeves yesterday. That leaves Kentucky trailing 707 to 933 in total. In fact, yesterday marked the fewest donors KBC has seen in the competition on a single day in more than a decade. Officials at the KBC continue to urge Kentucky fans to do their part by rolling up their sleeves, reminding the public that the blood supply remains at near critical levels and that donating could help save lives. It is 538 and we are continuing our spotlight on Danville. That's right. And today we are focusing on the history of the town known as the birthplace of Kentucky. Danville, Kentucky is the site where Kentucky became the 15th state in the union. The first state funded school for the deaf was established and where the first abdominal surgery in the world took place. But the community is also making sure to highlight forgotten stories like the urban renewal that destroyed a predominantly black business district in the 1960s. They said that uh, white folks would not come to Danville to visit because of the second street. So there, there was a plan to get rid of it, and that's what they did. Urban renewal came in with a plan telling the people that they was going to uh, Revent, renovate the buildings and uh, sell them back to the black folks and so they could maintain the building. But that didn't happen. They sold it to the state and the state sold it to the city. And now you see the park as it looks now. 
And you can learn much more with Christiana Ford tonight at 6 o'clock on LEX 18 News. 539, if someone tells you to take a hike today, well, it's okay because today is National Take a Hike Day. There are more than 60,000 trails in the U.S. National Trail System. Some of them are almost 200 years old and track the footsteps of explorers like Lewis and Clark. Hiking is great exercise, can burn up to 550 calories per hour. Some hiking and walking options in or near Lexington include Raven Run Nature Sanctuary, McConnell Springs, the Legacy Trail, the UK Arboretum, Veterans Park, Jacobson Park, the Pinnacles, the Jessamine Creek Gorge Trail, or the Red River Gorge and Natural Bridge if you want to venture a little further out. Just always check ahead of time to ensure the hiking location you're heading to is open. 540 now here on LEX 18 News at Sunrise. Here's a look at lottery jackpots. Friday's Kentucky Mega Millions jackpot is $74 million. And tonight's Kentucky Powerball jackpot amount is $190 million. Warm but windy. That's the best way we can describe today's weather. Stick around to see Tom's forecast coming up after the break. And after that, we're going to see some of the big numbers the Wildcats put up in last night's slam dunk performance in Rupp Arena. Eli Gain and Josh Berry and have details. So big changes ahead. The good news is at least the change in the short term is for the warmer. We're going to warm things up big time today. Our 21C Museum Hotel live camera and the Max Track both uh, not showing anything this morning, but we'll light it up tomorrow morning because we've got rain on the way. So before we get there, notice the direction the wind's coming from south southwest. It is going to be just flat out balmy today. High surging thanks to that strong southwesterly flow, but along that front and dropping in rain likely some gusty showers overnight. I mean, this is early tomorrow morning as this round rolls in. So that means we'll have the potential for a wet Thursday morning commute, but then by Thursday afternoon will rapidly clear out. So any showers that we see later in the day will likely be over our eastern counties and then those will rapidly pull east as well. Yeah, that's a wintry mix into the higher elevations of the mountains there. And then we are in the clear for the most part early in the weekend as high pressure tries to ridge in from the southwest while we'll gradually increasing cloud cover by late Friday. But overall, be a quiet and chilly start to the weekend. Rainfall, quarter to about half an inch of rain. So it'll be a quick hit. We could use it and we're going to get it and it'll be through and it'll be done. Then the chill settles in. And here you can see that first front going through that colder air rolling in. And uh, that chill will linger in the early parts of the weekend. You notice we try to recover a little bit temperature wise, but never really see a significant warm up. And there's more cold air loading with another front coming our way early next week. We we're in the 50s and 60s. This is to start just a couple of mornings ago. We were down in the mid 20s. That's how much things can change this time of the year. And that's how much things are going to continue to change. But what I am noticing about the uh, trend in the next week is we're starting to flatten it out a little bit, and unfortunately, these warmer spikes are going to start to be a little more suppressed, and the cold is going to start to hang on a little longer. 40s Friday, back in the 50s this weekend, and then potentially even colder in the next week. Low temperature trends showing pretty much the same thing. Could be our coldest highs and lows of the season as you get toward the middle of next week after that second front comes through. So, highs today around 70 degrees. It's gusty. It is warm. Skies partly at times to mainly mostly sunny. We'll have a lot of sunshine, but that wind is going to be uh, a factor. Tonight, mid 40s, gusty showers, cloudy and chilly. And as far as that wind is concerned, it is going to be sustained out of the south southwest anywhere between about you know, 10, 20 miles per hour. But we will see wind gusts upwards of 25 to 35 miles per hour. So keep that in mind if you're outside today, uh, that wind's going to be a factor. Now tomorrow the rain will be a factor, but it's primarily going to be in the morning. Notice the rain chance is maxed through the morning commute. Uh, that's getting into early Thursday morning, 5 a.m. through noon. Pretty much we're in the window for rain and then it rapidly drops off. As I was talking about that rain's going to push into eastern Kentucky and we'll be out of here. And then of course just dry and chilly Friday with highs only in the 40s. 50s barely Saturday, but sunshine to work with. And then late in the weekend, another rising chance for precipitation. Looks like it'll primarily be rain. We are trending a little milder at the onset of it. Uh, could be a little bit of a mix at times early Monday morning with lows down the mid 30s. But then that front passes through and we get an even colder shot of air around Tuesday of next week.
Oscar Shibwe and Xavier Wheeler could have some of the most impact seasons in UK history after their starts with the Wildcats to this season. Kentucky back at home last night facing Mount St. Mary's all big O in the opening half, even showing a little mid range jumper. Team has been harping his shooting skills and he put it to use last night. That one right there puts the Cats up by one little back and forth in the first half here. Ty Ty Washington, another good game after the season opening struggle against Duke. He had 16 on the night. Washington and Shibwe combined for 26 of the Cats, 38 points in the first half, led by 11 at the break. But another blowout in the second half. Shibwe kept doing his thing and then Wheeler started to catch fire. He finished with 12 points and eight assists. That's 20 assists in the last two games with only one turnover. Kentucky starts the half on a 13 nothing run. They cruise from there with an 80 to 55 win, making a betting man very lucky for covering the 24 and a half point spread. With more on Kentucky's night, here's Josh Berrien from Rupp. Eli, my ears are ringing right now. If I have to hear basket by Shibwe one more time, I'm going to lose it. No, but seriously, it's pretty obvious at this point who UK's most valuable player is. For the third straight game, Oscar Shibwe recorded a double-double, a career-high 24 points, 16 boards. He's the first UK player to start his career with three straight double-doubles since Julius Randle did it back in 2013. I mean, he's a beast in the paint, but today he killed his competition with his mid-range game in the 80-55 victory. In practice, when we do our five-minute shooting drill, he made he makes anywhere from 72 to 84 every time. So it's like we're all encouraging him to shoot that shot. Every single coach is telling him, you know, you got to take more jumpers so the def uh, defense can respect you. But coach, you say if you're not taking those in the game, we're gonna run. We're gonna run. So all my teammates do like every time they give it to me, you can't even scream. You can hear them scream, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. So I just catch it and shoot. 53 points, 56 rebounds, and eight blocks in three games. When asked if we should start calling him a machine because that's what Coach K referred him to because of his play, Oscar said, You're gonna have to take that up with God because I get my strength from him. Next up for the Cats is an undefeated Ohio team to close out the Kentucky Classic this Friday at 7 p.m. at home. In Rupp Arena with the Cats, Josh Berrien, LEX 18 Sports. EKU back at home last night taking on James Madison. This one going down to the wire. Braxton Beverly puts the Colonels up by three with under two minutes left. The Dukes later pull it to within one and then with 14 seconds left, uh-oh, Cooper Robb turns it over on the inbounds pass and then off the missed three point attempt. Charles fouled in. That's easy. Lays it back in with six seconds left. They're up by one. So here we go. Jamaru Brown's going to bring it up and he's going to find Devontae Blanton, who has a look at it but can't get it to fall. EKU drops his first game of the season 79 to 78. The Kentucky football team will wrap up the home schedule this Saturday when they take on New Mexico State at noon. There will be plenty of seniors honored before the game. The Cats are coming off a win against Vanderbilt and now face an Aggies team that ranks as one of the worst teams in all of FBS. We saw how Kentucky struggled though against Chattanooga in week three, but Liam Cohen sees a different approach from his players this time around. Just the energy, the, the energy, the serious, you know, just being serious about this opponent and um, you know, because like we've seen any given Saturday, anything can happen and I got to believe um, that this team being this far into the season is going to take any opportunity, hopefully, and go attack it. EKU wraps up its regular season at home on Saturday. It's a big game for the Colonels who host Jacksonville State at two on ESPN+. Plus. They need the win to finish seven and four to give them a chance at making the postseason playoffs. You know, if you don't win, you got no shot at the playoffs. But if you win, you, you're leaving it up to a committee that has got to take your body of work with your two losses to your three losses in the FCS. Why not, you know, put us in? And, and so I think that's, you know, a committee choice, a committee voice. We've got a strong history here. That being said, it's our next opportunity. For 18 Sunrise Sports, I'm Eli Gain. Enjoy your morning. You're watching LEX 18 News at Sunrise. It's 555. Welcome back on this Wednesday morning. We are getting a look inside GM's new Factory Zero in Detroit, where an iconic American automobile is going electric. President Joe Biden is set to visit today, and Tom Costello has your first look right now. 
General Motors calls this Factory Zero, a 40-year-old plant gutted and retrofitted with a retrained workforce. On the assembly line, the all-new electric version of the Hummer pickup, now at the center of GM's plans to produce nothing but electric vehicles by 2035. That's just 14 years away. Mary Barra is GM CEO. Are you able to scale up fast enough to truly make it all electric in 14 years? Absolutely, yes. We have the facilities. We have a, a talented, trained workforce. With the Ultium platform, that gives us an advantage. Make no mistake, GM is gunning for Tesla, which has roughly 79% of the electric vehicle market. Other car makers also want a piece of the pie, including Ford, Volkswagen, Nissan, and Jeff Bezos backed Rivian. But this is GM, America's biggest automaker going all in. President Biden will be here after signing the infrastructure bill that pays for a network of charging stations nationwide. We believe in climate change, it's real, and so we know that transportation plays a, has a, a huge impact. So the quicker we can bring everyone along to EVs, the better it's gonna be for climate. GM promises the 3,000 pound batteries will deliver performance, zero to 60 in three seconds, with a range of 350 miles. And just like Ford's new electric F-150, customer demand for a powerful EV truck is strong. The first electric Hummer hasn't even rolled off the assembly line, but 10,000 people have pre-ordered the vehicle, first deliveries by the end of the year. Meanwhile, like most automakers, GM has also been caught in the global supply chain slowdown. While it's now reopening the factories forced to temporarily close, a shortage of computer chips used in every car and truck may take months to resolve. Many of those chips come from Taiwan, now the focus of tension between the U.S. and China, making it a top concern for the head of GM. You need that Taiwan connection like many companies do. Well, and yeah, and we have, again, we have um, semiconductors coming from many different countries across the globe. And so making sure that we have uh, enough supplies, our first issue, and then that, that there's not going to be other issues that impact that, of course, is something we look at. The country's biggest automaker plotting a green future amid ever-changing global challenges. Tom Costello, NBC News, Detroit. All right, it's 557. We've got a brand new half hour of sunrise for you straight ahead. Some key decisions regarding Pfizer COVID boosters for all adults could come this week. We've got a preview of that. Plus, today is a perfect chance to finish those outdoor chores. We are back right after this break. LEX 18, streaming local news 24 7. Search for LEX 18 on your device. Count on LEX 18 News. Right now at 6, there's a push by Pfizer to make their COVID-19 booster shot available to any adult who wants one. A look at the timeline for approval. Plus, actor and Kentucky native George Clooney sharing his thoughts about the tragic shooting on the set of the film Rust. And how Kentucky fans are faring in the Big Blue Crush blood donation battle against Tennessee fans. A brand new half hour of sunrise starts right now on your Wednesday. Six o'clock on the dot, November 17th. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Claire Crouch. I'm Chris Goodman, meteorologist Tom Ackerman here. One word we're probably not going to hear a lot this winter is balmy, but uh, <laughs> that's an no. adjective you can describe the weather for today. Right? Yeah, it, it does happen this time of the year. The problem is you get these warm spikes, you, you know what's coming. I know. Oh, sure. Makes me nervous. And it's not warm. Uh, <laughs> let's show you what's going on out there and uh, get a quick check of the current conditions. Uh, which are, you know, fairly tranquil. That's a live view from atop the Lexington Financial Center. That's the Max Track. This is the future track, our computer model. And notice the, well, number one, lack of cloud cover, but also this southerly wind. You see these little red arrows, an indication of the wind flow at the surface. It's coming from a, a warm direction, south to southwesterly flow. It's going to crank those highs up to probably around 70 degrees today. But you can also see cloud cover and moisture on the rise back to the west. This is gathering along a cold front that's going to pass through overnight into tomorrow morning. So we've got a really good chance to see rain tomorrow, not today, uh, mainly for the morning commute. We'll talk about the timing of all that here shortly, but we're already in the upper 50s. It's still in the low to mid 60s west, so it is mild this morning and it is going to be, as Chris was saying, balmy today. Balmy, you typically say it when it's warm and it's windy and we're going to have both. Highs around 70 degrees. Our record high in Lexington is 80 today, so we're only 10 degrees off of that. 
Uh, clearly, things are about to get chillier. We'll talk about the cool down and the eight day coming up. All right, it is coming up on 602. There is a push by Pfizer to make its COVID-19 booster shot available to any adult who wants one. That's right. The FDA is considering the company's request to amend its emergency use authorization. One, one FDA director says it's the highest priority if the FDA greenlights the exchange. The next step would require the CDC director to sign off on it. A CDC spokesperson says they will meet on Friday to discuss expanding booster eligibility. Some states and cities with COVID-19 cases on the rise have already opened up booster shots to vaccinated adults. And we're continuing the conversation about the COVID booster shot this morning, and we want to hear from you. This morning, we are asking, would the FDA's expanded approval encourage you to get a booster shot? All you have to do to take part is scan the QR code on the screen right now or log on to lex18.com slash vote. Now we are going to be checking in throughout the morning and we will have final results coming up at the end of the show. Earlier this week, Governor Andy Bashir said state health officials believe new COVID-19 case statistics have plateaued. But some of the state's most updated coronavirus figures do show an increase. So this morning we are going in depth on Kentucky's fight against COVID-19. This is Kentucky's most recent COVID-19 figures. Yesterday, the state reported over 1,800 new virus cases. This is double the amount reported the day before. Also, 38 more Kentuckians have died from the virus. That's also an increase, as there were 10 deaths confirmed on Monday. However, the state's positivity rate did not change. It currently sits at 5.73%. And another aspect of our data seeing fluctuations is our COVID-19 current incidence rate map. Out of Kentucky's 120 counties, approximately 64 are in the red zone. That means the incidence rate for every county is in the highest category per 100,000 people. There are about 50 counties in the second worst zone, orange. This is an increase from Monday by two, but the amount of yellow zone counties decreased to four. They are Hickman, Lee, Owsley, and Wayne counties. And we want to remind Lexingtonians about a free Moderna COVID-19 booster clinic happening today. The Lexington Fayette County Health Department is holding the clinic, but all available appointments are filled. Today's clinic is from 2 to 6 p.m. at Consolidated Baptist Church on Russell Cave Road. However, walk-ins will not be accepted. No other vaccines will be given at this clinic. To see when other vaccine clinics will be held, you can check out the Health Department's website. We are going to pop that address up on your screen. There it is, lfchd.org. It is 604 now. Kentucky's basketball team might be putting in work, but there's some disappointing news for the Big Blue Crush blood battle. Yeah, the Kentucky Blood Center says we are falling way behind Tennessee and low donor turnout could impact the hospital blood supply ahead of the holidays. Evelyn Schultz in our studio this morning with this LEX 18 update. Good morning to you, Chris and Claire. This is not the turnout Kentucky Blood Center wants to see for Big Blue Crush. Kentucky has won the top competition the past two years, but this year KBC says we are trailing way behind the Vols. Yesterday, Kentucky saw 335 donors give blood, while 453 Tennessee fans rolled up their sleeves. That leaves Kentucky trailing 707 donors to 933 donors in total. Yesterday actually marked the fewest donors KBC has seen in the competition on a single day in more than a decade. So officials at KBC are urging Kentucky fans to do their part by rolling up their sleeves this week. The blood supply remains at near critical levels. They say donating can help save lives. You can help Kentucky make a comeback by visiting any KBC donor center this week. They're open from 9 to 6 for Big Blue Crush. You can also donate at a mobile blood drive through Friday. And now, Evelyn, why does the Kentucky Blood Center say donating blood is so important? Yeah, Claire, I just learned this this morning. It's an impressive number. KBC says more than 200,000 lives are saved in the state each year, all because of blood donation. Officials tell LEX 18 they transfuse an average of 270 pints each day at local hospitals. To keep up with that demand, they need at least 400 donors a day to give blood. They tell us they see an average of 61,000 donors each year.
Schultz in our studio this morning. Evelyn, thank you. Coming up on 607, actor and Kentucky native George Clooney is sharing his thoughts about the tragic shooting on the set of the film Russ. The shooting made national headlines as Alec Baldwin accidentally shot a prop gun that had a suspected live round inside. The film's director of photography died. Another person was hurt. On the week of the shooting, Clooney made a guest appearance on a podcast with Mark Maron. Clooney said every time he handles a gun on set, he opens it with crew members and shows the person he is supposed to aim at. They repeat this process for every take. Clooney added he's done this since his friend, actor Brandon Lee, died of an accidental film set shooting back in 1993. Some animal shelters in Kentucky are seeing high numbers of intakes in 2021 compared to previous years. According to shelter workers, many spay and neuter clinics were shut down last year because of the pandemic. Some shelters desperately need homes for foster animals. They are asking anyone who could keep a litter of kittens or puppies to contact their local shelter and offer assistance. 608 this morning, we are celebrating our Spotlight on Danville series by testing your knowledge with a trivia question. I love trivia questions. Play along at home, see if you know the answer to this one. Why is Danville known as the birthplace of the bluegrass? Is it A, it had bluegrass growing? B, it's where Kentucky's first constitution was signed? C, it's where someone first called Kentucky the bluegrass state? Or D, it's where bluegrass music originated. Jot down your answer, save it for later. We're going to give the answer during the next half hour of Sunrise. And we are one day away from an active forecast. Meteorologist Tom Ackerman <laughs> tracking a cold front that could make tomorrow's commute a rainy one. Yes, we'll tell you what you need to know next. But first, let's get a peek at those lotto jackpots. Friday's Kentucky Mega Millions jackpot amount, $74 million. Tonight's Kentucky Powerball jackpot, $190 million. Made it to the middle of the week in our 21C Museum Hotel live camera. Looking good for a Wednesday morning. The max track will light up with precipitation tomorrow morning, but this morning it is precipitation free. And this is the future track showing our cold front dropping in. So for today, this is it. If you haven't gotten outside the last couple of days, which I have not, I'm right there with you. Uh, you've got one more day to get all those leaves raked up, cleaned up, gutters cleaned out before this sets in rain overnight. Now it will be a quick hit and we will dry back out into the weekend, but there's going to be a big chill that also follows. So just flat out balmy on the gusty side today. And then the future track shows that rain most likely tomorrow morning. So for the morning commute, it'll be around and then into the afternoon, it'll push east. So by the evening commute, we'll likely have at least some sunshine early on before the sun sets. And then of course, uh, into the mountains, look at that, even a little bit of a wind tree uh, set up at higher elevations, some potential winter precipitation there. High pressure ridging in. It'll be a cold uh, setup though with that north to northwesterly flow, but still, at least we are drying out and we'll start the weekend off dry. May not finish it that way. Rainfall, about a quarter to a half inch. So yeah, we're going to get wet. Uh, the rain uh, will be uh, primarily overnight, so a lot of folks may not even notice it unless it's still hanging around, of course, for the morning commute as you head out the door. And then, of course, following it up, I've been talking about this the last couple of days. If you follow these wind lines, this is the wind out ahead of the cold front coming out of the southwest. One of the reasons we'll warm up today. Right there's your frontal boundary, and there's that west to northwesterly wind, the colder air coming in behind the front, and there it goes. So by tomorrow afternoon, temperatures, we could hit the high early in the day and then see temperatures falling into the 40s later into the afternoon. Uh, Thursday after the rain departs and then just a chilly start to the weekend and there is no return, no snap back to warmer highs. We'll see some slight moderation into the weekend, but there's another cold front coming in from out west and we will have another hit early next week. We're in the upper 50s now. We've got mid to upper 50s for a lot of folks, but look at the high today, 70 degrees. All right, a record high in Lexington. We're nowhere, we're not going to be anywhere near it. We're going to miss it by 10 degrees. It's 80, but still we're up there. And then all of a sudden, just start lopping degrees off. 50 tomorrow, low to mid 40s Friday, big time chill to start off the weekend. Overnight lows are cold, but look how cold they could get next week with that second wave, that second front coming in early next week. We could have an even colder shot of air coming in behind that one. Gusty and warm, partly to mostly sunny. Not a whole lot to uh, worry about today. Uh, gusty uh, wind is really about the only uh, thing that's going to slow you down. 
but tomorrow it'll be more of the rain. So uh, as far as the wind is concerned, sustained winds 10, 20 miles per hour south to southwesterly, which is a nice direction for it to be coming from. But those gusts could be anywhere from 25 to 35 miles per hour. And then the rain, as I was talking about, it's primarily going to be in the morning, 5 a.m., 9 a.m., or just before lunch. And then all of a sudden into the afternoon, it drops off. That's that line tracking east and out of here. So uh, by Thursday afternoon, we may even see a little sunshine. But yeah, highs in the 40s to start the weekend off. Another rain chance late in the weekend and could be a little bit of a wintry mix early Monday morning. And look at that highs, potentially upper 30s Tuesday. 614 check of your top stories. There is a new $750 million lawsuit related to the deadly Astro World Festival crowd surge. The lawsuit was filed on behalf of at least 125 people and seeks damages for physical and mental health injuries. Travis Scott, Drake, Live Nation and Apple Music are all named in the lawsuit. The jury in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial will resume deliberations just a few hours from right now. Protesters are expected outside the courthouse once again today. Rittenhouse is charged with shooting three people, killing two of them in Kenosha, Wisconsin last year. He says he acted in self-defense. The new infrastructure package will create jobs and modernize our country. That's the message from the Biden administration. President Joe Biden will be up in Detroit today, while Vice President Kamala Harris and four cabinet members plan to speak on the legislation elsewhere this week. KFC wants its customers to ditch the drive through The Kentucky-based chicken chain is providing an alternative that it thinks is more efficient. It's called Quick Pickup, and it works like this. You order ahead on the KFC app or website, drive to the location and park in a dedicated spot, and then you just stroll in and snag your food off a shelf by the register. Quick Pickup is available in most of KFC's roughly 4,000 locations. Stock futures are mixed once again this morning as investors get ready to digest another round of earnings reports from big box retailers Target and Lowe's, both releasing numbers this morning. And now here's a look at yesterday's closing price of stocks with ties to Central Kentucky. We're back here at 618. Thanks for starting your day with us. Kentucky's next legislative session is less than two months away. State social workers rallying on the steps of the Capitol yesterday told LEX 18 they'll be paying attention. They are pushing for a pay increase in the next budget cycle. The state personnel website shows openings for family support specialists pay about $26,000 a year. Because of this and the pandemic, the agency lost approximately 600 employees since the beginning of the year. One social worker said this is causing a strain on remaining workers. It's very emotional because as a supervisor, I'm having to ask people to stay and to know that they're having difficulty taking care of their own families, that um, when we have a shortage of workers, that we're putting our staff in dangerous positions. You just heard from the executive director of the Kentucky chapter of the National Association of Social Workers. She adds that some counties only have one worker, which is causing delays in investigations as well as getting kids in new foster homes. President Joe Biden's infrastructure tour continues today. The president is heading to Detroit to see how the nation's largest automaker is preparing for an electric future. And while back in Washington, Democrats are beginning work on the next plank in his agenda. Chris Pallone is on Capitol Hill now with the latest. Day two of President Biden's infrastructure roadshow. Visiting this factory zero. The center of automaker GM's plans to build nothing but electric vehicles by 2035. The quicker we can bring everyone along to EVs, uh, the better it's going to be for climate. After signing a trillion dollar infrastructure bill Monday, the president is trying to show voters how that spending will affect them. The government now set to fund a network of electric vehicle charging stations across the country. Tuesday, Mr. Biden visited a key New Hampshire bridge, which will now get much needed repairs. When you see these projects starting in your hometowns, I want you to feel what I feel, pride. Pride of what we can do together. 
as the United States of America. Back in Washington, lawmakers turned to part two of the president's agenda, a $1.75 trillion bill with money to create new social safety net programs and to fight climate change. We'll keep going in the weeks ahead by passing the rest of the president's Build Back Better agenda. Republicans are united against it. It will only exacerbate, only make worse inflation, not only this year, but next year. And some Democrats wonder how more spending would affect rising consumer prices. When I hear it when I go to the grocery store or if I go to the gas station, they say, are you as mad as I am? And I says, absolutely. Democratic House leadership wants to vote on that spending bill this week, the Senate by Christmas. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Washington. 621 in a little over a week, Americans will sit down with family and friends for a Thanksgiving meal. Straight ahead, Tom will reunite with us <laughs> to talk about some Turkey Day theme stories. It's two minutes away here on LEX 18 News at Sunrise. 624, Chris, Claire, and Tom checking out some Thanksgiving theme trending stories this morning. And we are in the home stretch as Turkey Day is only eight days away. That's Ooh, crazy. That's right. I know. Yeah. I, I, I know. I realized that. I, I realized that yesterday, and I'm like, okay. that is next, next week. week. Yes. Yeah. And then we're just in the downward slide into 2022. <laughs> Scary. Okay. Well, new data released from delivery app Shipped. Details some interesting shopping habits surrounding the holiday. I liked this. Their survey suggests Americans forget to buy cranberries the most while shopping for Thanksgiving at 33%. The least forgotten item, alcohol mm -hmm. at 14%. Okay, then. I mean, that's not, I would say in my household growing up, that wouldn't have been the number one, but whatever. And I don't know if people are forgetting cranberries. I think they're probably just not getting them. Maybe, <laughs> right? maybe. They don't oh. want them. It's maybe. kind of one of those things a lot of people make and then like nobody eats it. Right, yeah. exactly. I yeah. just feel like you have to have it. And then, yeah, most of the time it just gets thrown out. But, like, you need it on the table. One in ten respondents claim to swear off cooking a Thanksgiving meal again because Never they again. forgot <laughs> to buy a key ingredient or item. Fifty-two percent of Americans admitted to buying store-bought bread. What's wrong with that? Instead of baking their own. I know. Well, baking absolutely. your own? Like, on Thanksgiving, on. you've got so much else going yeah, on. Yes, do really. yourself a favor. Buy the rolls. Get that, oh, get like that those, loaf yes. of Wonder Bread yeah. and get those Thanksgiving rolls. rolls, they are really good. Those sister shoes. Those Bert's sister rolls. Schubert yes. rolls. Oh my I God. Love them. Drizzling with butter and stuff. <laughs> and uh, pumpkin pie, you gotta have that. And of course, the stuffing or yes, the dressing. Absolutely. Gotta have that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good man, you're hungry? Uh, yeah, <laughs> a little bit now. I think so. Yes. Uh, six brand new floats will debut in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade next week. All the magic begins in a 72,000 square foot studio in New Jersey. And it's there where we get the first glimpse of some of the new floats. Take a look at this giant. Peacock. Well, actually, are we looking we at the right. I okay, think we, we saw it. Yeah. We, All right, we birds of a feather there it is. stream they together. Okay. <laughs> Brought to you by who else but the streaming service Peacock. There is oh. a celebration gator yep. presented by Louisiana right. Office of Tourism and Magic <gasps> Meets the Sea Mickey. by none other than Disney Cruise Line. And this floating water park, colossal wave of wonder, and topping it off, a quick glimpse oh. at models of the new balloons, including the Mandalorian, which are being watched over by retired balloons hung from the rafters. Be sure to tune in next Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, right here on LEX 18 to catch them all in action. Wow, yeah, you gotta have baby Yoda. Yeah, and at some point next week, they'll have that really hyperactive guy that just walks him through it. They have it every year. Uh, yes. Like, yeah. He's like, ah! So, yeah. He lives for this stuff. <laughs> And another Thanksgiving tradition is still going strong for two former strangers who met in 2016 after an accidental dinner invitation. Wanda Dench thought she was sending a text with a dinner invite to her grandson. Turns out he had changed his number. Jamal Hinton got the message instead. The two figured out the mistake, but Hinton asked if he could still come over to her home in Mesa, Arizona. And Dench replied saying, of course you can. That's what grandmas do, feed everyone. And that started the holiday tradition, which is now in its sixth year. Mm -hmm. And this year, he posted on Twitter to tell his followers that the two are still celebrating the day together. Yeah, Jamal was with 16 when this happened. Yeah. Now he's 22. And then uh, you reminded us earlier that yeah. her husband passed away last year yeah. because of COVID. So, But the tradition a, lives on. So it's a, a sweet, sweet year. thing. Yeah. All right, almost 628 now. The UK men's basketball team were not the only big winners last night in Rupp Arena. Nope, coming up. See the half court shot worth 
thousands of dollars. Yeah, and a pretty good looking storm tracker forecast if you like it warm today. It's not going to last into the weekend, though. We'll check it out. Count on LEX 18 News. Coming right up at 630. Approval for all adults for the Kaiser uh, Pfizer COVID booster could come within days. What the governor says this could mean for Kentuckians. Plus students and a, in a central Kentucky a county are shifting to NTI days due to a rise in COVID cases. And it wasn't quite cats by 90 last night at Rupp Arena, but the cats second straight victory was still by a large margin. Details and highlights straight ahead on LEX 18 News at Sunrise. Final half hour is going right now here on this Wednesday. Today is November the 17th. That's right, it sure is. And today is the last maybe balmy day for a while. <laughs> yeah, you're probably correct about that. Gosh, so okay. <laughs> take advantage of it. That's all I can say because this what we have today is not going to be happening for the upcoming weekend, unfortunately. And what Claire is talking about is more than likely a high of around 70 degrees. So that's some good stuff, especially this time of the year. But you know, this time of the year, if you're hitting 70, something's going to give, and it does overnight tonight. That's Keeneland. That's 21C Museum Hotel's live uh, camera downtown. That's the Max Track. Nothing on it. This is the future track as we go through the afternoon. Sunshine today, hazy sunshine. Clouds gradually building in from out west, but we'll hold them off much of the day. But notice what's going along with that cloud cover. You've got some showers on the move, so we are going to get wet. We'll have a round of gusty showers blowing through overnight tonight. Primarily going to be an impact tomorrow morning, so it could be an issue for your morning commute. And then later in the day into our eastern counties, we're in the upper 50s now. And yeah, it, it, it will be balmy today. Windy and much warmer, well above average highs. Showers Thursday and then the chill for the weekend, and it may not be the only wave of colder air coming our way. We'll break down the timing, the impact. Check out that eight day forecast, your complete storm tracker forecast one more time. 32, we begin this half hour with an update on Pfizer's COVID vaccine booster as the FDA could authorize the shot for all adults within days. A decision could come as early as tomorrow or Friday. Evelyn Schultz is in our studio this morning. She joins us now with this COVID-19 in Kentucky coverage. Chris Claire, good morning to you. The FDA's approval could come as Governor Andy Bashir announced on Monday. He's also considering the possibility of issuing an executive order that would expand eligibility for the booster shot. The governor said COVID-19 cases in K Kentucky seem to be hitting a plateau. They declined for seven weeks in a row. But Kentucky has reported more than 3,000 new cases in the past few days. And currently, when it comes to the booster, only certain groups are eligible. People 65 and older, those who have underlying health conditions, and people who live or work in high-risk settings. On Monday, the governor pointed to a handful of states that have already brought into access to boosters. Everybody should be able to get a booster six months after their second shot as quickly as we can, I believe that that's the way that we fight off the next wave. And I believe the federal government will come back around to it and to that decision at some point. And like you said, it could come within a few days. If the FDA approves the booster, all adults would be able to get the Pfizer COVID booster six months after their second injection. So Evelyn, what about younger kids in Kentucky? They, become, they became eligible for Pfizer's vaccine just a few weeks ago. Yeah, Chris, I checked the state's vaccine dashboard this morning to look at the latest numbers. I learned nearly 18,000 children between the ages 5 and 11 have gotten their first dose in the past two weeks. That's about 5% of that age group. On Monday, the governor reiterated the Pfizer vaccine safety for kids. The state is even rolling out advertisements to encourage parents to sign their kids up for that shot. Evelyn Schultz reporting live in our studio this morning. Evelyn,